Hey there everyone, Mads Rock here, and today I want to go over how the tanks are looking and feeling in 9.1, what my experiences have been with them coming up until this point, and just kind of give a general overlook. Anybody who, uh, well, has watched this channel long enough knows I favor Protection Warrior more than any other tank spec, but that doesn't mean I don't like playing any other tank specs, or that it's automatically the best one, or that I think it's automatically the best one. So I'm going to be going over the tanks one by one and kind of a quick general overview. I don't want this to be a 30 minute breakdown, 45 minute breakdown of like every single tank spec, but we are going to go through them one by one, just kind of give a general overview and feel so that way if you are thinking about tanking in 9.1, this might help guide you in the right direction. First off, we're going to start with what was the meta in 9.0, which I think is still going to be a top three tank in 9.1 although there is no this isn't a rating tier tier video like best worst blah, blah blah i think all the tanks are insanely good right now and what's top of the meta from worst to the meta in tanks is actually the smallest gap i think i've ever seen in world of warcraft every tank is viable every tank is great uh and it's just a matter of which one do you want to play vengeance demon hunter now this is the one that i played the least i don't even have one maxed i don't enjoy playing a Vengeance Demon Hunter, I don't enjoy playing a Demon Hunter. That's nothing against anyone that wants to play one, go ahead, have fun. I just found it, found it boring to play. One of the things that I did not like was the amount of buttons. My Demon Hunter is like level 43, and I still have like a third of my keybinds without buttons. Like, where's all the buttons? And I get it. It was a class that was created in Legion, and it didn't need as much buttons. And that's why they pruned all the other classes to kind of give them less, but the problem was, is the Demon Hunter is still a class with the least amount of history to add these buttons into the game. Now, that does not say because there is less of buttons that Vengeance is easier to play. Not at all. Because it actually kind of works differently. It actually gives it a little bit of a higher skill ceiling, which I did enjoy while leveling up to an extent. Because I didn't get to enjoy it in the harder points of content. But I can see how it is played through other streamers and things like that that I've checked out. I get it what buttons you press matter a little bit more because if you press the wrong button at the wrong time especially something that's on a 30 45 second cooldown it's all you got so pressing your bat buttons matters more in which way you do it and timing is a vengeance demon hunter than it does on silly something else where if you press the wrong button at the wrong time that's okay you can probably press another button like to get yourself out of something oh there's a jam oh i need to do this oh wait i don't have it i'll do this where vengeance demon hunter is oh i need to do this oh i don't have it <laughs> because i press i screwed up and i pressed it at the wrong time so there is, there gets to be a higher skill ceiling on how to understand tanking with vengeance than with other classes that you know have a lot more history and a lot more length to them and a lot more buttons to them so that's kind of my general take take let me know if i'm wrong down in the comment section below it's wow everybody likes to talk shit that's fine up next, we're going to talk about the Guardian Druid, what I think is going to be one of the top tanks in the upcoming meta in 9.1, just for how incredibly tanky they are. At the start of the expansion, they don't have as many secondary stats to work with, but now coming into 9.1, a fully geared Druid, Bear Druid right now at 9.0.5 at the end is incredibly tanky incredibly tanky now we're going to be giving them more secondary stats so they are starting off strong and they're only going to get tankier as it goes on they can heal themselves they have tools for so many scenarios as many other druids do they have a lot going on and as well they are very simple to learn how to play if you've never tanked and you're looking to learn how to tank a bear druid is one of the better options but again they like the dh it's easier to learn, but it's not easy to master. Bear's got a lot of little nuances with it, with a lot of different buttons and what it can do, and knowing when to do what, of course, matters a little bit more. So it's got a higher ceiling to learn how to play, but it's very easy to learn how to play, right? It's kind of, it's got that mentality to it, but I felt so safe on my Druid on so many poles. Pa uh, Popping Incarn on a big pole and just going to town with the Thrash Legendary, like, you just let your tank know, like, I'm good, you don't need to heal me, just do damage. Like, you got 30 seconds of me just kind of thrashing around, I'm fine. Like, I'm not even going to take damage. And if I do, I can just frenzied regen and I'm good. So if you're looking to play an incredibly tank, tanky tank, <laughs> that uh, feels good, 
your damage is not going to be as high as some other classes, but you're going to have a lot less problem with dying. Bear Druid is going to be your way to go. It really is. You're going to be able to push really high content with Bear in 9.1, I think. It's going to be one of the top, top tank. You're going to see a lot of them coming up. And up next, we're going to talk Protection Warrior. Now, this is my personal favorite. Prot War is kind of what you think of when a tank. Sword, shield, plate, big heavy armor, let's go. Let's bash it, bash everything in its sight, and things like that. I think with the Reprisal Legendary getting a rework in 9.0.5, it really shot Prot Warrior up in the meta to compete for that top spot. The problem was, is meta changes slowly. It's not quick. Once it's set, it takes something extraordinary to kind of unseat. And I don't think it unsat DH for top tank. I really don't. But I think it's up there competing. And I think it can really be a top tier tank in the right hands. Knowing when to spell reflect, ignore pain, is one of the biggest things that's going to make you a top tier tank as you're, as you're playing. Because there's certain things that shield block isn't affected on. There's certain things that ignore pain is just kind of okay with, but is incredible for magic damage. So knowing when to use the two and knowing when to use spell reflect, this is my biggest criticism whenever I see anyone playing at Prot War, they almost never cast spell reflect, which you should be doing all of the time. You can negate a lot of mechanics if you time it right. It's kind of like a little mini AM, AMS, anti-magic shell from the, the DK, although it lasts for one thing. But if you hit that one thing right, like Reaping Scythe, you just don't take damage and you negate things. So it's really, really nice. Prot Warrior, I think, is going to be uh, an, an insanely good tank in 9.1. I've had a lot of fun with it, and in all honesty, the charge, the charge weaving, heroic leap, you have so many buttons at your disposal, and I felt like I always had something no matter what was going on in the pull. So 9.1, if you want to play a warrior, go ahead, get the reprise of Legendary for Mythic Plus. I found, I did find, little warning, I did find that Ray tanking on a prot warrior was actually pretty boring. <sighs> The Reprisal Legendary is really what makes that warrior style play insanely fun because it makes, uh, you know, charge weaving, it kiting, all of that. It, it just really makes it a lot more interactive where I found that raid tanking on a prop war was actually kind of boring. Is what it is. That's just my feelings on it. I'll, I'm still doing it for my guild. I don't care. I love doing it, but I definitely found that the excitement and the fun that I had for Prot War was definitely a Mythic Plus versus Raiding. Up next, we're going to talk Brewmaster Monk. Brewmaster Monk is one of those insanely underrated tanks right now. They really are good. And like I said, all the tanks are good. No questions. They're all good. Brewmaster Monk's stagger ability can confuse a lot of healers because they'll think that a Brewmaster is fine when really they're in trouble and their health just starts going down slower and slower from all the physical damage that they've accumulated and that they're staggering. So really, it's one of those tanks that you got to work with your healers and your party to be able to know when you're in trouble and to get that feel for it, because it's a little bit different. Although, I think they have a ton of utility. Ring of Peace is great in Mythic Plus, and from my experience playing a monk, and uh, our my guild master, and our, you know, our main tank, is a, a brewmaster monk, and uh, she's incredible at it. She has lots of fun. She always has... Uh, lots of buttons to press. It's very fluid. You always have something to do. You get absorb shields. Like you really have a lot of fun defensives. And I think uh, if you're looking to play a Brewmaster Monk, go ahead and do it. Just understand that when you're doing so, there's not as many in Mythic Plus. You're probably gonna have to talk to your healers a little bit more and be like, okay, this is what Stagger is. Have you ever healed a Brewmaster Monk? Because there are a lot of new people trying out healing, and think that just tanking is mitigating damage up front, and that's it. Well, no. Every tank mitigates damage differently. Some just straight up mitigate it and don't take it. Some delay the damage so that you have to heal through it, that you can purify through it, and things like that. Some just outright take it and force you to heal through it. <laughs> DK! So, really, it's kind of having to, to work with your healers like that, especially your main healers if you're pushing high-end content. But just know that if you're picking a Brewmaster Monk, you're going to have a lot of fun. And I think it was actually the busiest spec that I played. It was one of the busiest specs that I played. Uh, I couldn't press the buttons fast enough. Like, I, I, I was always two buttons ahead in my head. Like, okay, here, 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 here. And that, to me, was a lot of fun. But it was never, like, clunky. And that's one thing I have to give the Brewmaster. It was one of the smoothest tanks that I played. You're always pressing something, but you're always pressing something that's fun to press, that's 
working with your entire kit and it just makes it just makes everything feel good so brewmaster monk excellent option if that's your choice all right protection paladin coming up next so with protection paladin i feel like with the rework that they just got their holy power back and having to use the shield of the righteous is very important i feel that it's still clunky i don't know that's kind of my best way that i i can explain it everything in the kit felt great right up until shield of the righteous uptime that to me felt a little clunky with the management of the holy power and i'm sure that there actually is a way to kind of fix this but i feel like as an active mitigation that being clunky like if shield block on a protection warrior felt clunky the clad the spec wouldn't feel good to play at all because it like it's your active mitigation that you're just n can't be putting up all the time and i felt that with pro paladin it didn't feel that great Aside from that, and that's the only thing that didn't feel great. Everything else about the kit was insanely fun. Avengers Shield, uh, a lot of fun. The Judgments, I love the amount of range that you get on a Protection Paladin too. Just being able to throw hammers from far away is insanely fun. Like, they got a lot of buttons for a lot of things, and a lot of very specialized buttons. Just really like, oh crap, not dealing with this buttons. Not happen. And that is just a lot of fun to play with. That is my only gripe with the class, is getting around the Shield of the Righteous. I feel like they could just extend it by maybe a second or two for the duration, or just have something work around with it like that, and maybe have it be worth a little bit more. I don't think it's giving as much active mitigation as it should, because I like it's not as good as an iron fur on bear, but the thing is, is bear, you can stack it. You can't stack it on paladin. You just increase its length and duration, not its... N not how many times it's stacked over one another so it kind of feels like it could be a little bit better there i'm not saying s over stack it like it's a little weird but that's the one little mechanic with it that i felt felt clunky to me aside from that everything else about the kit was tons of fun i still really like going to play uh paladins and then plus right now because you just go in and divine toll right off the bat is insanely fun to use so there's just they've got a lot of pros to them word of glory for that off healing as well kind of gives you that little mini dk feel where like uh a healer's gonna be like oh crap you're in trouble and then boom you're back up to full health with the right word of glory or you can save a friend save one of your allies when your allies you know got hit with something they shouldn't hit, hit three holy power word of glory boom here you go like it's they've their utility is really strong I really like really like that with the, the prop paladin. Nothing against them. The only thing that I felt was clunky again was the shield of the righteous. Uh, kind of uptime on that. And last but not least, because these are in no particular order, but the blood death knight. Now the blood death knight is going to gain uh, from the 9.1 dungeon nerfs, especially the dungeon nerf to necrotic. This is going to be a big one because necrotic used to do on every melee hit. Now it's going to go on every other melee hit. So you're going to be able to stay in the fight a whole lot longer, and one of DK's problems was getting out of those packs. Now, if you're Venthyr, you have Door of Shadows, so you can just zoom on out and work from there. And then, of course, you have Grip of the Dead, so Death and Decay, 90% slow. Really, really good for kiting to those that it affects. The problem with that is, is if it doesn't affect <laughs> certain creatures, you're not getting away from them. I'm like the Tenderizers and Mutilators. I can't remember the exact name of the packs in Necrotic Wake, but those guys, like, you can't get away from them. Door Shadows is really your only way, and like using grips and weird little things to kind of help you around there. So you got to work with that because you're really, really slow. And in a, in a high kiting meta that we are currently in in Shadowlands, you can't f sit and face tank everything. Although, really with the DK, you can you don't have to start worrying about this until you're like in 18s and 19s. I found so. You can really face tank everything and kind of heal through everything because a DK in the right hands is going to be the last man left person standing on any TPK on any party wipe is always going to be the last thing standing guaranteed. They might actually be able to solo some stuff that other tanks can't because of the healing from death strike and how they, how they work and operate. And I know me, especially doing 15s, once I get into the flow and I the rotation's down and I've got the feel and everything's going, if there's a wipe from, you know, failed mechanics from the party or this or that, I'm not the one dying. 
I'm I'm the last person dying. I'm the one having to intentionally stand in crap to die. And while that is true on most tanks, I can't say most tanks. Well, that's true with all tanks. Like that's gonna usually be the case where the tank's gonna be the last one alive. More often than not, the DK lasts a lot longer and can solo a lot of things. I have brought packs in plus 14s, plus 15s, where, you know, a Goliath Rebel Fisted on a four week, the healer didn't quite have everything topped up, party died, I was still managed to finish off that entire, the entire pull while the party came back and we moved on just because of the healing that the DK can offer. And I really think DK should not be slept on as much as it is. If the problem is, is it is not easy to learn and it is not easy to master. Where like bear is really easy to learn, but hard to master, DK is hard to learn. You need to know when to death strike. You need to know when you're in trouble. And you like, and you need to talk to your healers about this. Uh, so I've worked with my healer, with the, the healers that I run with, and being like, okay, so this is it here. So with this pack here, you're going to see that this is going to happen. And then I'm, I'm in trouble. Like, I'm in trouble right now. Okay, I get when you're, like, and they kind of learn through that. But that I found was one hard thing where a lot of healers don't know how to heal DKs. But at the same time, a lot of people don't play DKs correctly because DKs are really good at negating things. So like anti-magic shield, if you just don't want to deal with like a ma magic mechanic, don't. Anti-magic shell. Done. <laughs> oh, this thing's going to stun you? Icebound Fortitude. Nope, it's not stunning. DK is insanely good at negating things. And knowing when to use those negations is key to you being an insanely good tank. And of course, knowing when to death strike. Because sometimes you should hold on to it. Anybody that tells you don't just spam death strike as a death knight, they have no idea what they're talking about. Because sometimes, yes, you should be casting death strike as much as you can because you're in a lot of trouble and you need to heal crazy fast. And you've got the runic power coming in to just spam it. Sometimes, no, you should hold on to it because you know there's a big hit coming. But it's in two globals. You're already at full health. You don't quite have the runic power for a second death strike coming up. You should hold on to it. Because when you get hit, boom, you can go right back up. So knowing when to death strike is incredibly important. And knowing when to negate certain mechanics with your abilities is incredibly important. So with that, I have probably rambled on far enough. Long enough, like I said, I didn't want not want to break down fully everything for make this a crazy long video. That is how I feel with the tanks going forward to 9.1 from having played them, from having seen people play them in high end too, and spending a lot of time watching and looking at rotations and things like that. I have played all five tanks aside from Demon Hunter in higher end content. So I do have a feel for most of them there and I've had lots of fun with most of them. Just the DHs again was the one that felt off. If I'm wrong about anything or if I left everything, anything out that is crazy important that anybody should know before picking up the game being like, I'm starting a bear druid today. Please let me know. Put that down in the comment section below. If you like this sort of content as well, please like, like this video, subscribe. We're going to be a growing channel. We are a growing channel. I, I actually am stunned by the amount of uh, subs that we've gotten in the last couple of weeks. And that only grows. So please, let's keep that growing. And if you're looking for a fun, positive community discord, that link's going to be down in the uh, comment section below, in the description below, sorry. Uh, come on by, check it out. We still are a very small Discord, but very positive. So come by, check that out for any Wowhead news, any tank questions that you may have. Great place to get a hold of me there as well. I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Come on by, check it out. I hope you guys are as excited for 9.1 as I 